thanks everybody for being here. Um, I think I know most of you, if not all of you. I'm Grant, um, and I do lesion tracing for Branch and Myrna. Um, and I'm passing around a printout of this, and we're going to make uh, the outline available online to download, so you don't, you know, need to write down all, all the stuff that's on there. Um, and I should also kind of start with a disclaimer about this whole uh, endeavor, which is, well, A, the actual tracing can be tedious. Um, hopefully this lecture won't be too tedious, but uh, just as kind of a heads up that this work can kind of get a little boring sometimes. But, um, you know, there's interesting things to be learned in doing it. Um, and the other thing is that, uh, you know, individual labs can differ quite a bit on, uh, how they actually go about doing this. So, you know, reasonable neurologists will differ, um, and if there are s things that, you know, you have any questions about, is, you know, I'm kind of planning to be very informal. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to stop and ask, but don't be surprised if the answer is because Branch said so, or <laughs> because that's, you know, how our lab does it, and, and you know, you gotta make uh, some decisions at some point, and so that's what we decided. So, um, to start off, I just figured, you know, uh, I'll show you the actual program that we use. Um, and to get it, it you know, it's just, you can do a simple Google search for MRI cron, and then you just go to the installation page. The internet may or may not work for me here. So if it doesn't, don't worry about it. I mean, it's, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, you go to the installation page, you download the, you know, zip file, double click it, kind of like you would install any other program. Um, and it looks like the internet's not cooperating with me. So you download it, and it should um, bring up something like this. Let's blow it up so I can see it bigger. Um, so before you can actually, you know, draw anything, um, you need to open an image. Um, so like in most programs, you do that under File. Um, you go to Open and actually open a uh, an image file if you have it. Um, the other thing you can do from here is open Template. Um, and under here, uh, the ch2 is uh, that dot nii.gz is the extension that tells you that it's a uh, zipped uh, image file. So uh, nifty. So um, the ch2 is is Colin 27 um, from the Montreal Neurological Institute. Um, this is a, a template they looked at. I don't know how many, a lot of people, and this guy Colin has the most average brain out of all of these people, um, and, and then they did a whole bunch of scans, 27 of them, and, and then average those together to make this, you know, the most average looking brain that you can find. And so, and we use this, uh, this template as um, a standard space. Um, everybody has lots of, you know, different shapes and sizes of brains. So in order to compare, you know, in a common space, we, we get it to kind of mush it around to the most average, uh, space that we can find. So anyway, so you can find that over here, file, open, and open templates. Um, there's also a Broadman map, which is um, okay for some for some uses. Um, it has problems, you know, it, it comes with this disclaimer, use at your own risk. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not as precise as, as you might want for a lot of uh, purposes. Um, another useful template is this AAL Atlas. Um, which uh, color codes things by uh, their their anatomical gyri, as opposed to so the Broadman areas are based on supposed to be based on um, sort of cellular structure, but you know they kind of just guessed <laughs> for the most part. Um, so what's kind of cool about this is that uh, if you're wondering what these regions actually are, you can um, sort of click in a region. Um, oh, up here uh, you have crosshairs. You can turn these on and off. But uh, down in the left, bottom left here, you can see it, it labels it, you know, temporal superior right, uh, you know, this is temporal mid left, you know, so you can click around and see what different bits are, um, and we can do some overlaying of templates on things, um, but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and you can do the same thing with Broadman areas. Right, that's right, yeah, so you can, uh, yeah, so, so this is, it's actually, um, I found it pretty useful for sometimes reading papers, you know, they, they talk about a Broadman area, and you can kind of click and say, oh, that's where 19 is. So that's helpful. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up this Colin 27 template again, just to show you some tracing stuff. So just to kind of show you the tool. So um, actually, 
number five on my outline here, flash off, is the same as this um, button here. Of course, that doesn't do anything because I haven't drawn anything yet. Um, so what you want to do is, is use this pen tool. These are the crosshairs. That's what I showed you before. This pen tool um, that comes up um, is what you want to use. This one um, is will draw a will enclose your shape. Did you is, there, is there still like a preferences thing that you have to select before those pen tools will all show up? No. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. So if you go under window. Ah, show drawing menu and tools. That's very important. Thanks. <laughs> so that is under help preferences, and uh, you want to make sure you check that. Um, you can make your pen thinner. I don't. I just leave it as the normal thing. Um, oh, well, there you go. I turn that off. So you can set some of these preferences here under the help menu. But you want that drawing menu and tools on. So. Um, once you have this pen tool selected, uh, you can left click and it will fill in one voxel. <laughs> Can't really see that very well, so I'll go ahead and blow this up. I'm just going to draw in the axial view, for, or sorry, the coronal view for now. That's, you can switch your views. Axial is horizontal, uh, sagittal is, you know, through your nose, and then uh, coronal is, is head on. So this is, the, it, it, this is what one voxel looks like. It's a one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter, one millimeter cubed. Um, and so clicking around, you, you know, we can fill in, fill in voxels. Um, you can also click and drag. It makes a region there. And then it'll, you know, sort of, it, you know, you saw maybe that it doesn't fill in exactly where your pen is. It kind of fills in the closest voxels that you overlap. So. You know, if I draw something that's round, it makes it a little more squarish. Um, once you have a, a enclosed region like this, um, if you use this tool that has this extra line going on here, it'll automatically enclose your region. And once you have an enclosed region, you can use the fill tool. That's the bucket there, and you um, just right click. Actually, you don't even. I'm sorry, you don't even uh, need to use that uh, fill tool. If you left click with it, it does the same thing. Um, you can stay with the pen tool. Um, and just right click as opposed to left click. Makes a, a dot, right click. This is something that will probably happen to you where you go and you make something and it doesn't quite connect and <laughs> um, it will fill the whole screen. Uh, Control Z is your friend. Um, that's undo. You can only do one undo. So if you do right click and then go, oh no, and hit a, a voxel, you have to. Get rid of it. To do that, uh, you hold Shift. So Shift does the opposite of, of tracing. Um, you can hit Shift and Fill, and it erases everything. Um, of course, if that's in a bounded region, uh, you can do Shift and Fill, and it'll get rid of the region. Um, you know, if you have more than one region, you know, you Shift and Fill, it'll just get rid of the one that you clicked on. Um, and you can also do Shift and Left Click to erase. It makes a little black line. Um, then you can uh, also hit, so this can get like really tedious filling things in. If there are, um, you know, going like one voxel at a time or something. If there's like a region like that you want to fill in a little bit faster, you can hold control and it makes your pen bigger. Uh, you can also do shift and control, which is actually usually when I'm using this control is to do shift and control to like take out a region as opposed to, you know, going one voxel at a time. Okay? So those, those are your uh, basic tools that you'll be using. Oh, yeah, and then once you have a region, a really important one, which I mentioned at the beginning, this little button, but uh, I find it's a lot easier. F11 does the same thing. Flashes it off for like two seconds. So you can see what's underneath. Um, and you can imagine that would be useful if you're tracing over a lesion. You want to know if you got you know all of it or if you went too far. So those are just the basic tools. Um, and so. Right now, you could probably go in and start start tracing things um, if you knew what to trace. So that's what we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about: is what is lesioned tissue, and what does it look like, and and where can you find it? So, um, kind of the first very helpful thing you could, is to know some neuroanatomy. So uh, number two here, I, ha I this is a great training website to kind of. 
um, just test yourself on on your anatomical knowledge. And hopefully, I'm hoping that this will load up here, but my internet's being a little uncooperative. Hmm. Well, in any case, <laughs> uh, if you go to this website that's listed here, ah. hmm. I don't know why it does that, but okay. Now it's working with us. Um, okay, so you go here, uh, you go to click for Atlas, and then you can see you can train yourselves on these uh, slices. So horizontal forebrain, you know, axial is the same thing. Um, you wa probably want to do it with the skull. Um, you can see over here that the skull has been stripped. Um, but all the things we look at have skull on them. So it'll bring up um, a bunch of slices through the brain. You know, pick one that looks interesting or do them all. Um, so it brings up an image. Uh, you know, so this is um, a random slice through the brain. And what you can do is you can show all outlines down here. And it outlines the important structures, which is great. Um, so and then uh, you can also label them. Um, gets a little messy, so sometimes it's good to outline them first and kind of pick one that you're interested in and then load it up. So it labels all these great, great things so you know what all these structures are. Uh, here's your corpus callosum, thalamus, insula, uh, putamen, some other good stuff. Um, and then uh, once you feel like you kind of have a handle on the structures, you can, you can give yourself a little quiz. And it says, click on the calcarine sulcus, oh man. Click and guess. And it says, no, you're wrong. <laughs> um, and you can show the answer. Hopefully your internet will be faster. Uh, I, was, I was close. I was in the right, I was in the right hemisphere. Right quadrant. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you can just kind of click. Click there and it goes. Oh, you got it right, Putamen. I should get this. Yeah. All right. So um, you do this a lot, and you and you can learn your neuroanatomy. Okay. Back, back to Colin. So now that we uh, are here, there are some there some uh, anatomical landmarks are more useful than others when you're doing tracing. Um, the calcarine fissure is apparently not one of them. Uh, so I listed them here. Um, Dura mater, that is, so your, your brain actually kind of uh, floats in a, in a bag filled with fluid. It's a very tough bag. Um, in fact, dura mater means tough mother in Latin. Um, and it actually feels like a tarp, I don't know, like, you know, the blue tarp material. It's very tough. And so your brain is wrapped in this stuff. Um, the, the, and, and the brain will go, goes really right, right out to it. Um, let me bring up a... It's, it's a little bit tough to see in some of these other views, but you can, you can see it pretty clearly in the axial. So, so uh, can you see this little like uh, rim around the brain here, kind of where, where it dips in? You can see that there's this, this rim here. I'll turn my pen tool off. You can see it here, a little bit up here. So the, the point of that is you don't want to draw on top of that because there's no neurons there. It's, it's just some tough material that protects your brain. And so you don't want to say that there's a lesion there because you know, there's no neurons. Um, so that's really your, your outer boundary. Um, so you want to be careful you know, when you're tracing. It, you'll see the dura is much more obvious on folks who have you know, atrophy, where the brain doesn't quite go all the way up to it. It's a lot tougher to tell you know, where the cortex ends and where the dura starts on, on Colin here.